So welcome to another unboxing video from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at Inferno Guelphs and Ghibellines. Probably not how it's pronounced. Uh, Vi for Tuscany, 1259 to 1261 from GMT Games. This is volume three in the Levian campaign series. Okay, and this is uh, this is title is designed by Enrico Acerbi or Acerbi. However you want to pronounce that, I apologize, it's one of those two, hopefully. Uh, and Volko Runke, who's designed uh, the previous two in the system. Uh, so, if you've played Levian Campaign, uh, this will be everything that you expect it to be. So this is a one to two player game. Most of the time you're gonna play a two player. Um, and this is a, like an operational game. You're levying armies, uh, levying your lords and, and all of the troops that they uh, are loyal to them. And then you're going out doing campaigns, trying to be successful, uh, winning territory, looting areas, gaining uh, the spoils of war so that you can pay your levies, uh, accruing victory points uh, to win the game. So, let's have a look at what we get inside this one. Uh, but if I think at this point we're all getting a bit more familiar with the system and the series and what it offers, so I think a lot of what's in here will be familiar at least. So we have a, a rules of play, nice glossy rule book um, with uh, lots of examples. Now, uh, let's see what well, we got ourselves. 25 pages of rules going on here. Um, a number of examples, but uh, the game itself isn't super mega complicated. Mostly that's an explanation of like actions that you can do which are on play aid, so it's not terrible. Uh, we do have a background book. This is the kind of stuff that I really appreciate in this game. So it has really detailed explanations of play, um, advice on solitaire, but then you get into the design notes and all the different histories and all of the different cards, explanations and, and areas in the game development notes. This is a tome, right? But there's a ton of goodness in here. There's 60 pages of helping you to learn the rules, but also how, helping you to learn history, because I've never played a game on this topic before, and I almost guarantee that you haven't either. So I appreciate that they do that. So there's a very small sheet of stickers. Um, this game uh, utilizes little cylind cylindrical wooden pieces, and we're gonna put those on there. Um, we do have these, so there's two of these. These are our player screens that kind of have, uh, for the different factions, um, heraldry on them. But you're going to be hiding, let's just stand this up, you'll be hiding what you've got behind uh, your player screen so that your enemy never knows quite what you have. Okay, let me have some sheets of card on the board here. So... We have a breakdown of the different lords and uh, and their vassals. So you have these different lord names, and this is kind of all the stuff that they come with. This is just kind of a quick reference, uh, and that's dual side for each player. We have our revolts and treachery. So I think this is a newer aspect to this. I don't remember seeing that in other games. There's a revolt table. I'd love to see that. And then we have the regular play aids. This will be much more familiar. So you got yourself a very detailed sequence of play and then campaign play as well. What the turns look like. And then we have our commands. So again, the 25 page rule book is a sick, all of it basically boiled down onto this card. Uh, it, it's pretty significant. Uh, so here it tells you all the different things that you can do, all of the requirements for those, and then a condensed procedure for executing that action. So, yeah, 25 page rule book, but especially if you've played a couple of these, uh, you'll be able to get through this very quickly and, and pick it up very easily. Once again, you have uh, your forces disposition, so all of the different types of units, what strikes they do, how they defend with protection tests, and any extra notes for them as well. Same book down here with strongholds. And then we have our battle procedure and resolution for storming. Uh, strongholds. And there's two of those, they're identical, but the play aids of these are really good. You're going to read the rules, but you're going to be up and running very quickly. 
Uh, we have three sheets of counters for this. I do really like the purple and gold uh, kind of theme that they've got going on here. And they have lots, you know, some green pieces from the terrain and some of the wood in the box. It's a really lovely looking game. Anyway, so here we've got these, the purple pieces, the Guelphs. Uh, these lovely little VP markers. These, uh, you'll be very familiar with these. This is kind of your ravaged areas, bypassing areas. These are more just kind of markers, siege markers. And then we have our kind of turn track uh, and victory markers as well. And these are all dual-sided, like the leans on the back for victory points, etc., like that. These are our different lords. And you can see these are all pre-rounded. These are really, really nice. You don't got to get your clipper out for most of these. Uh, but these are pre-rounded. You're going to punch these out. Uh, th these are used for, you put them on the levy track and when they're available or if they're delayed, getting those guys out. Again, these are dual sided as well with information on the back. And then we have a sheet of uh, coin markers, uh, provender, food, loot, carts, things like that, nice ships. So again, this is an operational game. It's a lot about paying your forces, feeding your forces, transporting the supplies to your forces, making sure you're not overstretching uh, your bounds. This is the map. It's a very small map. This is uh, uh, 22 by 17, I think. Uh, just a small little map. A big chunk of it's taken up with this campaign track. So again, you're going to put your lords on here. There's also this... This is effectively the turn track up here as you move along these. But you're going to go through and, you know, we move it to this turn. You're going to be able to pick up whoever's uh, listed on here that you can, is available to be levied, basically. The map itself is a point to point map. You have these strongholds and they're connected by these different, uh, what do they got them? Roads are the dark ones and then tracks are these uh, brown ones. And then they said there were ships as well, so I presume you can do shipping potentially up rivers. Well, there's these little anchor points, but then out to sea as well, you can use ships as well. But very clean, uh, very bold artwork. Again, I think all three of these games so far have a different style of artwork. Uh, and I just, I think it's nice to see different styles expressed in game as well. But th that's the board, not a huge massive board, so now, you're going to have all this other stuff off map, which is why they keep the map small. But, so there's a big old uh, bag of wooden pieces, uh, and there's a bag of dice. These dice, again, are lovely. This kind of, like this orangey gold and the purple, and these are really big chunky dice with very large pips on them. So even the blindest of us will be able to see those uh, at a distance. I really like dice that are easy to assess. Uh, we'll crank this open here in a second and look at those. But... Before we do that, everything else that's in the box is a big shipping label and this stack of cards. So we'll open these here in a second. So we've got these very large, uh, chunky pieces of card, right? So we have, this is a little uh, tactical board. You have the attacker and the defender, and you basically have your, your lords that are in that combat. You're going to line them up uh, either in the center or on one of the wings. And so is the opponent. You're going to go back and forth. And this is just a micro version of where... So you line up the Lord tokens on here so that all of your off-map army compositions, you don't got to move them all on, right? That's really what this is for, just to make it a little bit easier. But these are all of the different Lord cards. Uh, so for Sienna, when you levy them, they're going to have a cavalier and they're going to have two men at arms on them as well. And they have a fealty rating, service, and lordship. And that d determines how, how long they're going to stick around for and if they are going to disappear, like how long they go away for, and that kind of a thing as well. The different commanders as well. And there's all sorts of different ones. So cavalier, two men at arms, and two militia. This fealty is only a three. That's not very good, I don't think. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of these. The Ghibellines and then the Guelphs. Again, you're gonna, you're not gonna have have, well, it's unlikely you're gonna have all of these out at any one given time because you're gonna levy so many of your armies because you have to feed them all, and you and you're gonna have a hard time, um, 
having that enough success to be able to both feed and sustain this many armies. You're going to have some of them out, but not all of them. So the game has two types of cards in them. You have command cards and you have arts of war. So the command cards are a bit simpler. So, sh well, he says, if I can get them open, I'll show you those. Uh, and they're the same for both sides in, in what they kind of look like and do. The command cards is simply a, a set of cards for each lord in the game. And why that's important is because at the beginning of any given campaign... Dredgery. That's new. <laughs> oh, I'm very excited for that. So, uh, if you have this particular lord out on the board, um, at the beginning of a campaign, you're going to build a command deck with cards from all of your different available lords that are on the board, and you're going to stack them in order, face down, and then the activations is going back and forth, revealing a card. Hey, it was this one. The next one was, hey, it was this guy. And so your order of activation is important. How many cards each lord has is important. Some are more powerful than others. Um, and then the order in which you put them in, which you can't then go and look and assess, so you can hose yourself in a way by making a bad deck, even though you've got the right guys in there. Uh, the order you put them in is very important. There's some passes that you might have to put in, but also these treacheries. This is new. Uh, I'm almost 100% positive that wasn't in previous games, so I guess you might have guys defecting. Uh, that would be very bad, but also very funny. So, uh, I'm very excited to try this stuff out. Ghibelines have exactly the same kind of a deck. Obviously, it's their own different lords and their own heraldry, but just wanted to kind of show how nice those cards are. I really like the bold uh, and colorful and striking artwork on them, and yet they're not too busy. I just think they're really nice looking cards to play with, right? They also have their treachery cards of guys going back and forth or revolting. Again, we're going to consult the revolt and treachery summary. So lots of treachery, not good. <laughs> and then the other cards in the game are these arts of war cards. So the arts of war cards, are you, you're going to get a couple of these every turn uh, or every season. And these are dual use cards. And they have stipulations on them, but effectively you are either going to, generally speaking, you're either going to hold a card and play it for its kind of event, and some of those are combat events, some of them are you know, just game-breaking stuff, uh, or a lot of the time it's adding them, uh, you add them to as an ability underneath a lord, and each lord can have like two. So for example... This is obviously the wrong guy, but you can stick this guy under here, and he has trebuchets. So this lord, uh, unrouted at Storm or Sally, where three to four siege reduces enemy siege works or walls minus one. So the, you can either play your cards, again, hold them for events, or you can add extra abilities and extra strengths to your lords and who you give them to and what kind of ones you give are very important, but they can really drastically change kind of the composition of your armies or the capabilities of your lords and their forces. And the Ghibellines also have their own deck, and, and these are... They'll have some similarities in them, but I'm pretty sure... Uh, See, look, they, they also have the, uh, the trebuchets as well, but I think that there's a, a good chunk of uniqueness to them. Uh, you know, you have some f similarities, but there's a lot of uniqueness in them. And they got stipulations about anyone or some, only some lords can be affected by these. And so you, you, ha you have to be careful with these and, and what you do with them. But that's all of those. The last thing is we'll just take a quick look at the wooden pieces in this game. And there's uh, just a ton of them. So we had these uh, cylinders, right? That's what those stickers are going to go on. You're just going to peel those off and stick them on one side of those. But then you have things like uh, your militias and your uh, men-at-arms. Uh, I think these, what did we say? They were cavaliers, these green triangles. 
and the green squares were um, uh, Armageri, I think. Uh, lots of Italian names, but you're going to have a bunch of these on your army boards, but then on the actual board themselves, you're just going to have like the a cylinder with this symbol on it marching around, right? So these guys are marching around, all your forces are kept off map, and then when it comes to do battle, this guy, whose symbol looks like this, he's got kind of this, right? You're going to put that onto your little battle board. So you're never like moving all of these pieces around, they're just held off map, and this is a mnemonic for the board, and this is a mnemonic for the tactical map, if that makes sense. So that's how the game works and looks. Thank you for sticking with me. There was a lot in this box. Uh, I really like this system, but very curious to sit and play this one with the treachery that goes on. Always like that kind of a fun, you never know quite what might happen and, and bad things can happen to you. Just to keep you on your toes. So that was a look at Inferno from GMT Games. Appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.